welcome to another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. My guest today is Dmitry Bestuzhev, who is head of the global research and analysis team in Latin America. And I invited Dmitry here today to speak specifically about issues affecting uh, uh, businesses and users in the Latin American region. So we're all familiar with the, the, the types of malware attacks we're seeing in the U.S., uh, issues around social networking, issues around uh, 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 social engineering type attacks, fake antivirus, a lot of the, the everyday th issues we face in the United States and the rest of the world. Is that the same issues you're dealing with in Latin America or are there malware malicious issues in Latin America that's unique to your region? Thank you, Ryan, for this invitation. And basically, you know, yeah, the black market, the, the malware creation stuff is different, you know, because the main target in Latin America is money, especially like in countries like Brazil and yeah. others. So it's all financially motivated. Yeah, everything. absolutely, absolutely. In some cases, we also have botnets. So basically, it's also because of money, you know, and like medium term uh, time uh, controlling and stealing all, all kind of information. Right. Uh, one, one of the issues I've always uh, seen as, as it relates to Latin America, particularly in Brazil, and I know this is going to be a part of the discussion here in this conference, uh, is the issue of bank atrocities, specific atrocities targeting specific banks in the region. Talk a little bit about uh, how bank atrocities affect uh, uh, users in Brazil and how it's kind of expanded to the rest of the Latin American region. Well, basically in Brazil everything is quite simple. You know, a lot of social engineering. After social engineering, the machine gets infected, and the 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 attacker just steals all information related to the bank, and after that steals the money. And uh, but you know, recently the criminals from Brazil they also wanted to steal money not from only Brazil but also some European countries like Spain. Portugal and others, right. so they are moving, you know. So just the cyber criminals are based in Latin America, but targeting uh, victims in other parts of the world. Yes, exactly. the, same, the same tactics, the same uh, Trojans for specific banks, social engineering, get the Trojan installed in the machine. Yeah, exactly the same. You know, in many cases they do it because, uh, you know, internationally now it's possible to open accounts in other countries. You don't have to live in that country right. anymore. And on the other hand, they know that they are victims they can be, let's say, from Brazil, but maybe they move to live, you know, in Portugal. Right, right. So it's like, uh, there is a big relation right. between that countries, and that's it. Do you, are you seeing an, uh, an explosion in social engineer, uh, social networking type attacks, Facebook, Twitter, and those types of attacks uh, specific to uh, users in Latin America? Yeah, our studies, based on the last eight month, months in, in 2011, shows uh, that um, we have more than 50% of all attacks going through the web. Right. And it's everything, you know, including like social networks and also like websites. Right. So uh, the criminals, cyber criminals from Latin America, they do really like the web. They, they know that right, it's right, quite right. easy to, to pitch people there. Right, and it's easy because people generally will click on anything they see and, and, and users, user education on the end user side is very, very poor and visible. Do you have an issue in Latin American region with uh, uh, end users not patching their machines and oh, running yes. vulnerable machines and is it because of uh, uh, issues around piracy or is it a, a general lackadaisical attitude towards patching? Well, that's one of the issues in, in certain parts of the world with, uh, for instance, in the Windows platform, uh, a lot of end users just, uh, they're not using legitimate copies of Windows which Microsoft does not patch and then it becomes very tricky to deal with security. Is that something that's, you know, common in, in Parts of Latin America. Absolutely, yes, absolutely. You know, and there are two like main issues here. On the one hand, is yeah, they don't want to pay, you know, for licenses. Mm -hmm. They most like, you know, thinking like right. if I can steal it, like, and I did it in the past, I can just right. do it the same. But on the other hand, it's like also a habit which is related to the internet connection. Right in the past, uh, many people had like really slow internet connection. So each time they see like a pop-up, you know, there is a new update, 100 megabytes. Oh, right, come right, on, right. like cancel. Right, right, so right. they don't install it. So and and that that's the you can say the same for not necessarily just patching Microsoft Windows, but dealing with the more important patches, Adobe Flash, exactly. PDF Reader, Java, Java, QuickTime, and all that stuff. It's many of the same issues you face here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what, are, what, worries, what worries you the most going forward, uh, you know, as you look ahead to the future types of attacks in Latin America? Do you have uh, an explosion of uh, mobile uh, smartphone usage here? 
and are you starting to see malicious activity targeting smartphones? Yeah, you know, at the moment we have a, we, we we have already like mobile attacks, but mostly related to the uh, social engineering as well. You know, leading to some like affiliation program websites and so on. There is no at the moment any malicious code developed locally, uh, but in the future we will have it. And another interesting issue I see that looks like because of um, you know like habits and practice since latin american cyber criminals they just recycle uh, ma malware techniques right, right. from so the it's past a lot of copying and pasting right so we'll see it and not only this i think i strongly believe that in 5 years or less we'll see also new apt attacks but produced locally you know inside of latin america from right. which country from one country attacking another country right. it's something which we are expecting so let's expand a little bit on that is that something you you see businesses here in latin america uh, having to pay special attention to five years down the line or are you talking more along the lines of stuxnet type government to government uh, i think cyber war type yeah i think unfortunately we are talking about like government you know level because even right today we have um, you know like um, uh, proves where that some countries are already interested in right, stealing right, information right. from other countries right. and things like Stuxnet in five years will be something so that quite kind of, real. Right, that kind of specialized piece of malware that gets in, uh, pl placed on a business network or on a government network and kind of just sits there for a long time collecting exactly. data. That's the same type of thing you expect to see in five years. Exactly. Uh, how are, are uh, law enforcement and, uh, you know, government agencies in Latin America dealing with cybercrime? Uh, is, it, is it easy to get someone arrested and prosecuted and, you know, potentially put in jail for all these bank atrocities and all this malicious activity we're talking about? Or is it, uh, or does it, not, is it not happening? Can you fill me in on, on, on the law enforcement side of things and, how, and what some of the problems are there? Unfortunately, it's a really big problem for many countries because on the one hand, we don't have like proper you know laws for that mm -hmm. on the other hand sometimes people inside of police they are just not prepared not quite trained for you know like analyzing stuff right. to getting evidences and in many cases even like in the in the case of brazil unfortunately even the own government isn't interested in approving new laws because they say the same law to fight cybercrime can be used against them by the police to spy on oh, them. Right, 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 so I right, say, like, right. no spying. So there's because, a lot of political issues involved. Yeah, in that. exactly. How do we fix that? Well, what is your recommendation for getting you know the fight against cybercrime fixed? Maybe it's about you know working like on joint uh, legislation, joint laws, uh, like on the regional level. Maybe yeah. like Indian pacts, maybe uh, Latin America, Caribbean zone. And then it will be much easier to join like regions together than to join like country per country right, to interact right, between right, them. Right. So, just so it's, it, it's government to government interaction at the local level here in Latin America. Is it, uh, is it happening or is it, are, are the laws just stifling that kind of cooperation? In some cases, yes, it's, it's happening, but it depends on each country. If they have like a really good friendship relation between them, yes, they do it, but if not, like they just like, you know, they don't share evidences or they just don't want to, to participate actively right. in that stuff. All right, thank you very much, Dimitri. And thank you for watching another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. You can see some more webcasts at youtube.com slash Kaspersky.